Okay, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, get started. Um, my name is Brian Altenhoffel, um, and I like lots of data. How many of you all like data? You like seeing lots of pretty graphs? Do you like seeing pretty pictures in your presentations? Because I don't really have any. <laughs> um, and then up there, there's a few ways to contact me if you ever need to. Uh, I'm Veggie Meat on IRC. I am in just about every Drupal channel. Um, connect to it by proxy, so uh, I'll always get the message. Um, connect with me on Twitter, uh, send me an email, whatever. Uh, a little bit about me. Um, I have two Drupal businesses, actually. One uh, doing development, which is VMDO. And the other one I do uh, hosting, and that's in Ryzen. And that's also where I started doing a whole lot of uh, um, centralized logging. I've worked with Drupal since uh, 2008, and like I said, I like lots of data, and I also like automation. Um, it's very rare to uh, find me without putting a task in uh, Jenkins. So who knows what 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 uh, that is? Yeah, that that's just a typical nginx or Apache access log. Um, you ever tried to go and uh, you you've got an issue on your site and you need to find out what's going on, right? So you hit the log files. Well, typically you're going to just grab it, maybe send it through awk. A little bit of said or whatever, just to just to find out certain pieces of information that you need. Um, if you don't have a lot of traffic, you might just hit tail on it. But if you've got three million hits a day, that's not going to work. Uh, one way to go through this log, like I said, would be like with Ock. And in this case, we're trying to get how many times content was accessed between 3 a.m. and 3:59 a.m. server time. Can you remember how to do that every time that you need that information? Uh, if you wanted to have some fun with it, you could maybe do some Perl. You could th throw in some other regular expressions. Um, I, I've had one-liners, or maybe they should have been multi-lines that were alias, that would take up that entire screen. And I'm sure all of you have had that before, too. So that's kind of brings us to our problems with uh, conventional logging. Um, if you've got one machine, great. You can go through it that way. Um, what happens whenever you get, uh, say, 40 web heads, or say that you've got uh, multiple database servers, or you've got multiple file servers, you're needing to find the source of a problem. Maybe it doesn't occur on every single one of those servers. Maybe there's something slightly different because your configuration management didn't work right. Um, conventionally, you would need to go to every single one of those machines and access the logs. That, that doesn't work with 40 or 400 or whatever. Um, if you, you can't really have your technical support people a lot of them won't be able to go through those logs and find out if there's a problem. So let's say that you had an uh, email issue. Customer calls, says that I'm not getting any emails. So you, uh, customer support would ideally be able to, okay, let's go look at an email, see if it's giving up any errors or anything like that. Uh, in the conventional logging, you won't be able to do that. You, you have to have a uh, sysadmin or an ops guy or some other technical guy basically be a keyboard for that person. And because of that, it ends up taking a long time to fix problems. And we all know that in customer support, the customer wants their problem fixed yesterday. So the solution to this is uh, centralized logging. Um, with centralized logging, you basically are shipping all your logs to a central place. And in this case, what I'm going to talk about is shipping them from your servers 
uh, through Logstash, which is the uh, cute log guy in the middle, and having them indexed by Elasticsearch. And what that, what that helps you be able to do is you can go back weeks from now or whatever, and you can search through your logs just using standard uh, uh, Apache Lucene queries. Um, you can do that, you can limit it to certain time periods, you can find trends. Uh, it makes life a lot easier, especially if you've got a website that's generating tens or hundreds of thousands of log messages a second. So what is Logstash? Well, Logstash is a, is a uh, uh, Java yeah. that it, re it allows you to receive messages, but it can also parse them, and then you can send them to wherever you want. So if you want to send it to Elasticsearch, you want to send it to PagerDuty, you want to send it to StatsD and Graphite, uh, you can do all that. It's a lot like um, using Unix pipe or using T except you get a whole lot more uh, parameters and it's a, it's a lot easier to configure than that. Uh, if there is not a plugin available to ship it someplace, uh, there actually should be pretty easy to write. Logstash has uh, three different types of plugins. Um, the first are your input plugins, then you have your filters and you have your outputs. Uh, I've got a few of them listed up there, um, which one I'm going to talk about here is uh, Lumberjack. Um, the filters, it, the filters are great for manipulating the uh, log data however you need it. So you can separate out different parts of the log message into whatever field so that you can search by, say, the uh, HTTP status code field. Or you can search by how long a uh, slow query from MySQL took. Um, and Grok is also a, 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 a great filter. Um, it, it's basically, you, you can put together different regular expressions and also pass them as variables and, and reference them that way. Uh, anonymize is a great one. If you say you, your, your IT guys need to have all of the data, but maybe customer support needs uh, certain data stripped out. And that you can also do that with mutate. Um, your outputs, right now it goes a lot of places. Uh, you can ship it out to um, uh, PagerDuty is one that I use all the time, uh, Elasticsearch. Uh, you can also, I think you can do IRC too if you, if you need to. Um, it's a lot of fun. And it's also real, really easy to configure. Um, this is just a simple configuration that does uh, Nginx and Apache access log. Um, what, what it's doing here is it's receiving from Lumberjack. And you'll notice that there's a uh, type key on every one. I'm not totally sure if you can read it up there. there. There's a type key on every one of them. And what happens is uh, Logstash references that type to say that, hey, this filter applies to uh, these inputs and this output applies to everything that has this type attached to it. And so that way you can uh, route stuff wherever you want as it's needed. Um, Lumberjack, which I'll get to in a minute, has a really cool feature where you can arbitrarily add a field uh, from the shipper side so that you can have it show up on, in um, Elasticsearch. And that way you can search by maybe your client name or, or a particular server name, um, which would actually already be there. But if you had something that you needed to um, put together there, like maybe a cluster, you could have that uh, all exposed as a field. Um, you can also, uh, in this case, I'm manipulating it and um, turning, turning that field into a tag and then dropping it. Um, Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is a uh, document-oriented search engine. Um, it's built on Apache, we've seen. 
Uh, one nice thing about it is it's schema free, so you don't have to go through and define uh, what all of your fields are going to be. Um, it takes it from the JSON input and figures it out by itself. Um, it's also very easy to scale, uh, especially in a multicast environment. If your network, you can if you can multicast on it. Um, all you need is the cluster name, and it will automatically find uh, other peers or other nodes uh, for that cluster, and it will rebalance itself as needed. Um, most of your cloud providers don't do multicast. Uh, I know that uh, if you're doing this in the cloud, uh, Rackspace actually does if you use their cloud networks, their private networks. And so Kibana is actually pretty simple to explain. Kibana is a really awesome front end for Elasticsearch is what it amounts to. Uh, its current version, Kibana 2, is in Ruby. Um, and Kibana 3 is HTML and JavaScript based. But really, with Elasticsearch, you could actually build your own front end in Drupal if you really wanted to. Uh, Elasticsearch has a REST API for that. But why bother whenever you can get Kibana 2 that kind of makes your logs look like this, where you've got an easy chart there. You can uh, sort by fields that are over on the left. You can go and search them, graph them. Um, you've got the messages there below. Or Kibana 3 is, is kind of like this, a uh, lot prettier. Um, actually has a lot easier to use uh, uh, interface to make custom dashboards. And you'll see a few uh, screenshots from that later. And Finally, what is Lumberjack? Well, you can use Logstash uh, on the servers that you're shipping logs from to actually ship the logs to another Logstash server. But it usually takes up 100 megs or more of memory just sitting there running. If you're, say you're in a cloud environment and you're spinning up little 5, 12 megabyte web servers just to scale out, uh, you don't you don't really um, have the available overhead for that, that kind of application. Uh, our syslog, I've seen those grow up to uh, uh, close to 100 megs before. Uh, Lumberjack, it is a very, very efficient shipper that just kind of, it sits there and it just waits for log messages to send. Um, sends them over SSL, so if you need to ship them uh, over an unprotected network or over a non-private network, you can do that. And it uses very, very little memory whenever for the uh, footprint. If you look, that's what? 4K-ish, maybe? Well, they are pretty lightweight. And uh, Lumberjack is also really fast. Uh, this is a little uh, spreadsheet that uh, that uh, Jordan Cicel, uh put up on Twitter one day that was comparing the uh, uh, published rates and the consume rates of different shippers uh, through Logstash. And if you look at that, Lumberjack is capable of uh, 25,000 per second is what he was showing there. So why not use uh, Drupal's database log or the um, uh, core statistics module that's in core? Uh, it's really slow whenever you, whenever you get a uh, larger site that's getting a lot of traffic. Uh, that, that's, more, that's more stuff that you're having Drupal do. Uh, that's more times that you're having to hit the database. If you're hitting the database, you're probably hitting disk. Um, and it can get really, really slow if, say that you, say that you set up something with rules where you were looping over uh, a set of line items on a uh, Drupal Commerce order, and you're trying to do something with all those line items, but you, you maybe messed up and had something that threw a little error. 
Well, that can get carried away, and suddenly you've got 20, 30, 50, or 100 pages worth of uh, errors in the um, Drupal database log. That probably really slowed down the site for those people that were on there at the time. So it's typically a lot better to just log it, uh, have Drupal either just log it directly to a file or to syslog. Uh, but if you can't get direct file access like that, but you happen to be able to get remote database access, Logstash actually has an input for Drupal's database log. So all you have to do is give Logstash the uh, credentials and the connection information for your database, and it will pull out the watchdog logs and ship them for you. Uh, some advantages to shipping Drupal's logs elsewhere. Uh, it's a lot easier to search through them. You can, like I said before, you can do uh, uh, standard uh, patchy lucene search queries. Um, you can easily graph things. If you were, say, looking for 404 errors or failed login attempts, or maybe you're looking for just how many times a page was hit successfully. You don't have your database exploding whenever you uh, uh, have that little issue inside a loop. And you get happier users on your high traffic sites. Um, you can also ship, like instead of having to use a statistics module to see maybe your traffic, maybe you want to see a long-term graph. Well, you could, could have also shipped uh, your statistics to um, uh, StatsD and Graphite where you're, you're able to get a chart like this. So how does this help help me as a uh, Drupal site administrator? Or really in, in a general? Uh, scenario number one, as a website administrator, I need to know if there's a trend of increasing errors. Uh, you could, if you were shipping to, say, StatsD and Graphite, and you had that long-term graph, you, you could easily reference that and, and see that. But maybe you're not. Maybe you're just indexing all your log entries, or you're wanting to see if a particular error is occurring, like maybe a certain message that you know is coming from a certain part of your application. Well, you can easily put in a search query and generate graphs like this. Uh, these are actually two charts of the same same uh, data. Uh, the one on the left is a pie chart that's just showing the percentage, just showing your ratios basically, of uh, 200 errors to your 404s and uh, 301s and whatever. The ones on the right are showing how that happened over time. The uh, another one is MySQL, and the slow query logs suck. Uh, if you've ever tried to go and um, uh, maybe you, you're trying to grab through that, you don't know if it's going to be one line, five lines, six lines, ten lines, whatever. You, you don't know how long it's going to be. Um, plus, they, they have a really weird time stamp. And so you kind of have to shift gears to kind of think about Okay, what, what is this timestamp here exactly? Well, with Logstash, you're able to take that and, and uh, manipulate the log messages, compress all of those multiple lines down into one continuous message. Uh, you're able to translate the timestamp into a standard uh, timestamp that you can use on everything so that all of your index messages have the same timestamp format. Um, you can split out fields, which I'm showing the uh, scanned, the, the amount of uh, uh, scanned results, or scanned ro rows and the amount of uh, results from that. Really, I can actually go through, and if I set down some more with the filters and uh, worked, worked a little bit more at it, I could I could uh, split this out into even more fields, just splitting up that log message. But 
this you would agree that this is a lot easier than trying to look through uh, uh, MySQL's normal slow query log. Another one might be uh, Twitter trends. Maybe you're just wanting to see um, uh, what somebody's saying about your your brand, or you want to search through uh, DrupalCon tweets, or you want to uh, you want to see um, may, maybe you got a whole bunch of interests that you always search for on on Twitter, and you want to see how those are talked about over time. Well, that's actually pretty easy too. Uh, this is actually tracking the uh, Drupal and DrupalCon hashtags, and is actually a screen grab from last night. And it's, it's just got a, a, a few messages up there, and it breaks out the uh, uh, nickname and the um, any links that appear into their separate fields that can be sorted on there. Um, maybe you got things like unauthorized access. Uh, you, you always get people that, may, or maybe it's scripts or maybe it's bots that try to log into your site or create users. Maybe you want to see if there are certain times of day, certain IP ranges, or other certain characteristics that um, uh, are making an extraordinary amount of attempts. Uh, that's also easy to do. What what this one has is this is Drupal's actually logging the syslog, and then all the syslog messages are being shipped over to Logstash. And so we're searching on uh, the syslog type being being for the uh, Drupal program, and then we're basically searching for uh, it being denied, for the access denied. Uh, you could also bring up, you could easily do a graph of this just by click. I actually have the graph section uh, um, collapsed there, but it would have a graph of that over time. And if you wanted to drill down into different parts of that parts of that message, you could. Another fun one is IRC. Um, and like I said, there's, or like I say up there, there is a ton of documentation on IRC that never makes it on the Drupal.org. It's just, you know, somebody has a question that might seem off the wall there, so it gets answered, but nobody makes goes and makes a documentation page. Um, you can actually have Logstash sit in IRC channels and log them and ship them to Elasticsearch and index them. So that you can go in and, like in this case, uh, this was over a 15-minute period uh, uh, last night and just searching for views. Hey, I get a message where uh, uh, the DrupalCon bot responded to somebody about something with views bulk operations. Uh, but you could say say that you did that over a long term. You could go back and you could search through uh, um, something that you're having an issue with or maybe chart interest in a certain certain problem. And then another one would be uh, smarter notifications. Uh, I'm a big fan of pager duty, even though I get a lot of messages from it sometimes. Um, you can actually have Logstash go through and say, hey, does this message maybe have these certain this certain stuff in it? So maybe you've got a certain error message from your site that that needs immediate attention, but it's not doing anything necessarily that would trigger something like Nagios or Xenos to actually send out an alert. So you can have Logstash say ship it to PagerDuty, and that way you get a text message or an email alert, or whoever is on duty at the time gets a text message or email alert. Um, so in this case, we've got one that say that I went through and tagged it with a type, ouch. Well, it's going to send me a message that says super bad event for, for uh, uh, this or that. But th this comes in handy for, for, like I said, those little errors that don't necessarily um, uh, 
trigger my Xenos monitoring system, but they do need immediate attention. Uh, in this case, on this configuration too, uh, it's also at the bottom you see one for StatsD. It's shipping um, the the account for a for a particular uh, response from Nginx to or for a particular response code from Nginx to uh, StatsD, so that you get one of those charts that I showed earlier. So. Uh, more resources can be found at uh, uh, logstash.net or Elasticsearch. Lumberjack can be downloaded uh, off of GitHub and then uh, Kibana. And feedback can be left at uh, the DrupalCon site. So any questions? Yeah. Wait, this one? Okay. Hi. Um, do you have any recommendations for uh, all these logs once you're storing them and uh, indexing them and that sort of thing? It's probably going to take quite a bit of disk space. Um, are there anything that allows you to maybe put these things on S3 or something like that to help with the storage attribute if you don't have a lot of storage on the servers that you're using it with? Or maybe it doesn't, maybe I'm wrong, maybe it doesn't amount to a ton of storage, but. Okay, uh, yes, it does amount to a ton of storage. Um, uh, I've got one site that um, gets uh, about three and a half million hits a month and it generates probably 12 gigs um, every day or two. Um, so I, I do run into that problem and uh, one nice thing about the Elasticsearch data is you can pretty much just back it up as is and bring it in someplace else. Bring it into to another Elasticsearch instance. Mm -hmm. So what I end up doing is I run a script that um, uh, takes everything, every index that's more than uh, seven days old and archives it and then yes ships it off to s3 okay so yeah you can do that and it's it's easy to just uh, bring those archives back and pull them up in another elastic search in, in um, instance if you need to actually go back and look at them yeah, yeah. okay thanks okay. um can you go to the microphone yeah Um, about the lo uh, your um, your slides, are they going to be online? Uh, yes, um, I'm actually going to upload them to to the uh, uh, node on the DrupalCon site. Um, just haven't had a good Wi-Fi connection this morning. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Travis with Penton Media, and I was curious if there are any performance considerations to take into place with 40 or 60 servers like this. Um, yes, uh, I'm not quite sure what the threshold is on the Elasticsearch servers. Um, I know that I, I can run them on, on cloud servers. Typically for me, I've been running into about 17 or, or uh, 18 web, web nodes shipping their logs to Elasticsearch, um, and those are running two gig servers. Uh, that, that's about what I've been doing is every 17 or 18 it's up another two gigs. And that usually works out pretty well. All right, thanks. Uh, hello. Um, with Lumberjack and the shipping off of the logs, is that something where the Nginx, your web server, caching server, other things are writing to disk and then Lumberjack is reading those, shipping them off, and then log rotates, getting rid of those local log files? Or are you able to capture them and ship them off without ever hitting disk? Um, well, there's two ways to go about that. One, one is you can have, you, the standard way is to have uh, Lumberjack just watch the logs and it just reads them off of disk and ships them out, um, which that lets you get really aggressive with log rotate. 
because, hey, you're not, you don't care if they're there or not. So that gets you to kind of a second way, which is if you wanted to, you could mount that in memory, mount your log, logs in memory if you um, can manage it well, where you know that you're, you're going to rotate out before it gets full or anything like that. And you can actually speed that up pretty good. Um, but, yeah, Lumberjack, typically you just have it read from the files. Uh, it'll also take standard in, so you can just pipe something to it. Hi. We're going to have different site owners need to see logs or information just about their sites. And, of course, they're going to want to be on the web on a GUI that's not on a private network. Is there Are these tools going to be able to do that, or are there others you're using to let the public see their logs? Um, Kibana 2 has a branch um, that has authorization in it. Uh, it's not recommended for production use. So what I would do in that case is I would take um, uh, the Kibana 3 version, which can run on Nginx or Apache or whatever your web server is, and um, let the server handle the authentication there or put it behind SSL, um, wh whatever you're needing there. Uh, I've not seen if they are putting authentication into the into Kibana 3 yet or not, um, but earlier uh, in the talk, whenever I mentioned that I was shipping from Lumberjack and that I had a, a field that Lumberjack added, that is actually something I've kind of played with from the Kibana 2 branch that has authentication, which is it just authenticates off of tags. One other question here. Um, so I don't know if you've worked with other tools, but um, is there anything in particular with this tool set you found that has particular advantages over uh, something like Splunk or other products in this space, other than sort of the open source piece? Um, I haven't really worked with anything else. I, I kind of got started on this one um, by I, I hang out in the InfraTalk channel on Freenode. And I kind of got started by this one by asking, hey, what's the uh, standard right now? <laughs> and this is what they pointed me to. Um, I did look into Splunk at early on, and I found that in my case where I'm, I'm creating, right now I'm creating a total of 20 gigs to 25 gigs a day. Um, it was just a lot, lot more cost effective for me to, to roll my own, basically. Any more questions? Okay. Thank you.